Google and Amazon everywhere, including energy management. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Tom Holzbash, Senior Managing Director, West Monroe Partners. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Tanya. It's great to be here with you. What does West Monroe Partners do, and how are you involved in IoT and the energy sector? So uh, I lead our energy utility practice at West Monroe, and we work with uh, mainly the utilities. Uh, we help them with all their grid modernization plans. So really about how to take that IoT, that, that uh, connectivity to everything in their grid. You know, 10 years ago, we started with smart meters, and now we're actually moving uh, from that into a lot of these uh, uh, devices to automate the power flow on the grid. So distribution automation. Um, and, and now what the utilities are really looking at uh, significantly is around renewables. How can we get more renewables on the grid? How can we get more charging stations, electric vehicles? So um, it's really been fun over the past decade to see how the utilities have gone from, uh, you know, renewables are really a thing for Hawaii and California to now across all the states, um, including what traditionally we would call the coal states. It's all about the renewables. Um, and it's all about how do we increase the uh, DER or distributed energy resource hosting capacity on our grids. And so now that's, that's the kind of IoT that we're looking at to enhance the data coming back from all these devices we put in the grid uh, to enhance those, uh, those renewables. Google and Amazon become big players in every market yeah. they enter. So how are they participating in the energy markets? So they're, this is really exciting. So they've been participating for a while as, as uh, big loads, right? As their data centers. Their data centers are huge, right? And so the utilities love having uh, Google and Amazon uh, in their service territory. They always require that uh, you have renewables to power their data centers, right? Um, which is how they initially got into acting as retail energy providers, right? So in many states, Google and Amazon are retail energy providers. Uh, they do that so they could actually buy re uh, renewable energy to, to uh, um, power their data centers, right? Well, what's exciting now is um, how, how both of those players are into the device and the IoT space for consumers and small industrial uh, customers, right? So we saw um, our friends at uh, uh, Google buy Nest, right, thermostats. And so those are, I mean, whoever thought a thermostat could be cool, right? But uh, I, think, I think they're pretty cool, right? And so now they're, they're, they use their software, their cloud software, to actually be able to help you uh, manage your energy consumption, both your, your heating and your air conditioning, right, in your home, which is really cool. And, um, and then recently, our friends at, uh, at uh, Am uh, Amazon bought Echo B, um, which is an up-and-coming uh, programmable thermostat manufacturer as well. So they're augmenting their solutions around uh, Alexa and Google Home with the energy uh, control capabilities of these programmable th thermostats and the ability then to control some of your discretionary loads in your home. You mentioned Nest, you mentioned Echo B. As IoT mm -hmm. spreads across the energy, yeah. the data generated by these can tell some interesting and possibly intimate stories. From what you've seen, <laughs> are IoT uh, device companies behaving as ethical stewards of this data? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I haven't seen anything um, to the contrary, you know, at this point. Um, the, the folks at Nest uh, had some issues, you know, recently with people being able to hack into their products. I, I'm, a, I'm a big Nest customer, right? Uh, and uh, they've then recently re released uh, two-factor authentication, right? So that uh, you'd have to log into your, uh, your account and then possibly use a second uh, verification like through your cell phone. Um, so I thought that was a really good move because a lot of people have like not just the thermostats and the energy consumption that's in there, that's kind of not interesting to me. Although some people you know, consider that you know, uh, personal information. Uh, it's more the video, <laughs> the video in your home, the video in your backyard, your front yard. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty confidential. Uh, and uh, to have that exposed as well um, would be really unfortunate. So I thought the, the two-factor authentication from the Nest guys uh, was a quick and, and a very powerful response to that situation. What are Google and Amazon asking for in energy management and home aut automation data? And what are the consequences of them getting it? Yeah. 
uh, there is a, uh, um, I'm a customer of both Echo B and uh, of, uh, uh, you know, of the Nest uh, products. I, I, I love this stuff, you know, it's, I, I do this for a living, uh, but it's also my passion. I also have three electric vehicles <laughs> um, and solar on my roof. Uh, so I, I really do uh, enjoy this, uh, the ability of bringing together um, your own generation, uh, helping to clean up uh, our footprint you know, for transportation. And, and then also what's really cool about what they're doing with, with Alexa and with um, Google Home and these devices is to automate the control of, of these devices. It's pretty complicated really to figure out what's the optimal way for me to charge my, my Volt or my Leaf. Um, when, should, uh, when should I charge that versus how much energy am I getting off my solar panel versus uh, in, the, uh, in the case of uh, myself, I live in the Chicago area. And so we have this unique thing called real-time pricing. So every hour, my price of electricity changes, right? And it follows the wholesale market um, of what's called PJM, right? And so my, uh, so, you know, so I really want to optimize my usage, my discretionary loads, if you will, which are mainly my, my, my air conditioner, my heater, and my, my cars, right? Um, to actually uh, decrease my peak demand, right? Which drops my cost of energy, right? And it's pretty amazing. I've been able to do it pretty successfully by appropriately programming my thermostat, by programming my cars appropriately when they charge. I charge them at night. I preheat and pre-cool my house. Um, and I've been able to keep my average price of, of energy um, about five cents a kilowatt hour, which is crazy, crazy, right? Um, but that's because I use most of my energy in the middle of the night. In the case of Illinois, that's a really cheap time, right? Not necessarily in other parts of, this, of the country though, right? It's so true. Let, let's talk, let's switch gears a little bit. To, and, and I want to talk a little bit about um, privacy. It's been said mm -hmm. that regarding our data, if the privacy statements and the license agreements don't specifically preclude it, preclude it, um, you should assume it's, it's mm -hmm. being done. In fact, is, is that a fair character characterization? Um, I think that, uh, that, that folks like Google and Amazon are taking a look at that data uh, to figure out how to better serve you, right? Um, better anticipate what you want, right? So they're doing uh, predictive analytics, right? On propensity to buy. Uh, does it help them in their business? Sure. Does it help you as a consumer? Yeah, right? If you don't want to do it, then, you know, don't, don't, don't join their service, right? I think that's a really interesting uh, challenge for us though, right? Um, and, and the other thing, you know, we take a look at, uh, you know, advanced technology around uh, machine learning right? And eventually artificial intelligence. Um, but how does machine learning work, right? It sees, it sees something 100,000 times. It sees something that it's not 100,000 times. The only way that machine learning works is you see a lot of the same stuff, right? And so that's, that's a lot of what they're doing. They're trying to create these algorithms and stuff um, to, to basically learn. But you need a lot of data to train these algorithms and stuff. And so that's a lot of what they're doing, right, is these uh, predictive algorithms, right, to help their business, but hopefully help the value of the customer. It's a pretty interesting fine line, though. You can imagine how that, that information could be used for a variety of different reasons, though. Couldn't agree more. It'd be interesting to see what kind of regulatory uh, decisions are made in the future to kind yeah. of help regulate some of that. So Tom Holzbash, Senior Managing Director at West Monroe Partners, if somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, best way to connect with me would be my email. So that would be uh, tholzbosch at wmp.com. That would be T-H-U-L-S-E-B-O-S-C-H, just like it sounds, at westmonroepartners.com. Sounds good. And uh, thanks again. If you guys want to connect with me or find more of my interviews, you can do it right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.